Hey guys. So for a while I've had these ears. What these are for is you can make any attachment you want to fit on my quick change for my excavator, the 35 ZTS. What I want to make is a ripper for ripping out stumps and also getting through frost. I have a couple jobs coming up that I have to take a lot of stumps out. So, so this is the ear that's already on this bucket. So you can see it's, it's very similar. It's the same exact design. They just hacked away at the bottom to get this curve which you pretty much, you have to do that on a bucket. But with this ripper, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave it flat, and I'm gonna put a plate on the bottom, and then build my ripper down from there. So my piece of steel that I'm cutting it out of, is this 5 8 plate right here. This is eight inches wide and four feet long. So I'm gonna take and mark eight inches just so I know where the edge is. So now I know this is the same size as my piece of steel over there. And so I think I want this about two feet long. So I'll mark 24 inches over here. That way I know to stay within that boundary. Now I'm just gonna freehand this and, and I'll probably end up correcting a little bit as I go, but. I think that looks pretty good. That's about what I want. So now if I want this to be the pattern, I know that on my plasma cutter, I have a, a half an inch between the standoff edge and the center of the tip. So I'm gonna take this whole thing and basically take off a half an inch on the whole thing and then I can cut it out. Now I'll cut this out with the jigsaw and then I have my pattern. So this whole thing is a half an inch less than what I want it. So that way I can use this as a guide. So this is 5.8 steel. So whenever you're cutting, you should always have something underneath that doesn't catch fire. So in this case, I'm going to use a couple pieces of hardy backer board.
So I have this chunk of I-beam here. It's a half inch thick here and a quarter inch thick here. So I'm going to use the half inch side to cut out two sides to it. And they're going to go on the sides. And they're going to be about a half an inch smaller than this is right now. If you put them up flush like this, then you can only weld like the surface here, which would probably be okay, but it's just a lot stronger if you leave some space and it's not necessary for me to bring it all the way out. This 5-8 steel would probably do the job by itself. But I'm going to put a half an inch on each side anyways, because I don't want to have to redo something. So I'm going to use the same piece of wood that I used before, and I'm just going to take a half an inch off of it. And I, I nicked the end because there's no reason to go all the way out to the end and have like a point onto it. So I'll just trace this half an inch in, recut it, and then I'll use it for another template for this piece of steel here. So I, I used the grinder and I got it somewhat reasonable, but you know, I gotta, I gotta keep grinding off to make this nice and smooth. But that's the general shape of it and you know, it'll work just the way it is right now. So now I'm going to make the plate that this all gets attached to. This plate will attach the ears to the shank.
So I really need this thing to be square, both on the top and the bottom. As you're welding this, it's gonna, depending on which side you're welding, if you're welding on the inside, it's gonna pull it in. So I'm gonna put this piece of scrap steel both here and here. Just tack weld that into place so that this thing will stay as I'm welding it. So I'm gonna make sure that this is eight and a sixteenth still, which it is. So I'll just weld the other side. So now as I'm welding this, it's not gonna move. Because it's very critical, because I can't have I can't have this thing like out of square, because then it, it won't fit.
I'll go ahead and put the plates on the side and get everything all finalized. So I'm still only going to do little patches at a time. I don't want to weld the whole one side. It'll, it'll probably warp this a little bit in. You know, I cut this out of an I-beam. So that's as close as I could get with the plasma cutter. So there's this ridge on here. But I think I'm just gonna leave that on there and it gives it more support from wanting to shear over. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna pull it up just slightly so that there's a gap in there. Because otherwise I gotta weld, I gotta grind down that weld or I gotta grind down this side. So I'll just hold it up slightly and then I can put a nice thick weld bead in there. And everywhere's around, I'm gonna have a half an inch of space so I can weld in it. Otherwise, I'd have to bevel everything, and it's just a lot of work to do that. So again, I'm just gonna tack weld this. So that's exactly what I wanted. These go up about eight inches. You know, it looks a little weird, but this thing is gonna really be sturdy. I'm not gonna have to worry about anything. I mean, this isn't going anywhere now. This pond just thawed out. It's still muddy. Right, Bub? Yeah. We fell off. Yeah, we did. But then they flew away. Yeah. So I'm gonna test this thing out. And this tree needs to come out because my septic system is gonna go in here. I don't like to take a lot of trees out that are, are unnecessary but this one needs to come out because I need to take it out for my septic, so. Now usually, the way I take trees out is the same way that Andrew does. I'll dig on one side and push it over, and with the tree not being cut, it has a lot more leverage. But what I'm gonna show you is if you're coming into a job and the trees are already down and you're just trying to take out the stumps. So oh. this is not a very big tree, and I could push this over really easily, but I'm just gonna cut it first and then I'm gonna deal with the stump so that I have no leverage.
So now we have a fair test because this is about how long a stump would be if somebody took it down. So I have no leverage now, so let's test this thing out and see how good it works. Now the other nice thing about this ripper is now I can take all the dirt off of this without like too much of a fuss. I can just kind of pick the dirt off.
wasn't exactly the best example for taking out a stump because that stump actually came out a little bit hard. And it's weird because sometimes you can have like an 18 inch tree that'll come out with no problem, take it out in five minutes or less. And then sometimes you'll have like a six inch tree that could take you an hour to get out. It really just depends on how the roots are, how the rocks are, how the clay is, all that kind of stuff. So this one didn't come out easy, but I could tell you it definitely came out easier with this, with this shank than, than it would normally. And you can, you can also see that I have full function of the thumb still. I can still pick up anything I want with it. You know, I can't take a scoop of dirt away, but I can pick up anything I want with it. So, I have full intentions on putting a removable tooth on the end of this. You put a shank on there, and then you can put a, a regular tooth for a bucket on there, and then I can replace it whenever I need to. But for right now, I'll just get through these next couple jobs with the way it is, and then um, eventually I want to put some teeth on the back side here. So that way, if there's a really stubborn root that's really thick, I can turn this around and saw through it with just a couple swipes. So overall, I'm, I'm very happy with this. I mean, this came out better than I thought, actually, and it took a lot less time than I thought, too. I mean, it only took me like four hours to make this. So that was great. I mean, I thought I was going to be all day doing it, but... Did you make this at home? So I have a couple jobs coming up that I'm going to use this, so I'll film those and you guys can see what the end results are. But really I would highly suggest a stick welder for this. Any, anytime you're welding anything over a half an inch, a 220 MIG welder doesn't really cut it, not in one pass anyways. I mean you can, you can make it work, but I just feel more comfortable with the stick welder. Even though I actually like the MIG welder a lot better. I just think for this application anything half inch or over I just try to stick with the stick welder all right so I'll see you guys on the next job Pearl come here come here Pearl Pearl come here hey hey what's up Pearl give me high five good girl give me low five good girl all right Pearl, sit. Good girl. Lay down. Good girl. Give me high five. Good girl. Give me low five. Good girl. Speak. Good girl. Boom. Good girl. <laughs> Boom. Good girl. That was a good girl. Now you get a petting. Pearl gets a petting. Yeah, Pearl gets a petting. And you're the champion, oh, yeah. so you get this key. <laughs> Did you take the key from my excavator? Yeah. You silly goose. But I walked the thing. You're a silly butt. <laughs>